How about a nice hand for Alyssa Milano for coming all the way up from uh, from LA to to support us in this thing? That's such a great honor to have you here. Thank you so much. Well, um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. This is uh, this is a great honor. I have to say that MSU uh, campus is blowing my mind. I have, you know, and as a Grizzly, it pains me to say this, but uh, I think you guys are kicking Montana's butt over there. So uh, in this regard, you know. Um, you know, let me tell you just a little bit about myself. <clears throat> I grew up uh, in Cutbank, Montana, on a ranch farm in the North Glacier County area. And of course, uh, the front range of the Rocky Mountains was the backdrop for my life. You know, just in a matter of minutes, you could disappear up into the some of the most beautiful country in the world. And so it was up there that I really learned to, uh, to my love for Montana's wide open spaces and wild places. And uh, of course, uh, then I went to uh, to college at the University of Montana, and uh, I auditioned for this group called the Jubilers, uh, which was uh, sort of that was billed as Montana's finest voices, and that really changed my life. And so that put me on a path to be a performing artist, you know. But which I've done for all these years. But I guess that uh, when it came to this last election, you know, a lot of my friends were very disillusioned and wanted to disconnect and not really to get involved. Be and just basically give up but I realized that that was not the choice now is the time that we have to stand up and make our voices heard we cannot stand on the sidelines anymore for this for, for this election this is literally a fight for the soul of Montana let me tell you why I think that is my opponent stands with people whose main goal it is is to transfer our public lands into private hands to develop their natural resources and to take this out of public hands forever. We cannot let this happen. As a performing artist, I've toured all over the United States and I've realized that many of our states have lost what we still have here. Some of the people in, in other, other states have to literally travel for three hours just to be able to recreate and to hike and to kayak. You know, is this something we want for our beloved state of Montana? Yeah. Oh. So how what? is he going exactly to take our public lands? I'd like to know okay, what, what, it hurt. Please tell me in detail. Okay, what their plan is is that they they're kind of they're starting this whole narrative. He's asking how what is their plan to do this? I'm happy to answer that. First of all, he is funding groups uh, such as PERC and the American then uh, the Heritage Foundation and the Americans for Prosperity whose sole goal it is is to take these lands and develop them for natural resources. He's given thousands of dollars, you know, to to uh, to make that happen. And you know, the thing is, is that uh, you know, the whole idea of transferring it into state hands, the state does not have the the uh, has the money, you know, to to uh, really make this to to uh, pay for the management of, of fighting wildfires and such. And so when that happens, then that's when the sale begins. That's when they have to sell these just to pay for the costs of wildfires and managing these wildlands. We have the fourth largest state in the union, but we only have a million people in population. We do not have the resources. And so that's, that's the insidious way that this happens. Let me tell you that, as you know, I think the happiest people I know are people that spend the most time in mother nature. You know this is a fact. I think that one of the reasons that we have such a rough time in our society is that we do not spend enough time in Mother Nature. And you know, some of the happiest people I know are those who are kayaking and hiking and fishing and doing all those things, recreating, staying close to Mother Nature. And sometimes when I see someone who's having a rough day or is a little depressed, I want to say, you know, you should uh, take a walk in the mountains. And on a side note, um, maybe Montana should tell that other guy to go take a hike. <laughs> But, uh, you know, let's <clears throat> let's look at our history. Um, Chief Seattle of the Suquamish said that some 150 years ago that um, our you know that we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors; we borrow it from our children. And there could be no greater truth in regard to this beautiful landscape that we live in. And the transfer and eventual sale of our public lands is nothing more than theft against our children and our grandchildren, and I will steadfastly oppose it. <laughs> People ask me, they say, you know, why would you give up on a career as a, as a musician, you know, to, uh, to step into the down and dirty world of politics? And trust me, every day that goes by, I'm finding how, out how, how down and dirty it is. I mean, you've heard the stuff that they're spreading about me. And you know they'll say anything just to just to silence my voice and the voice of the people of, of Montana. 
you know, Montana needs someone who's going to stand up for the people and not for the millionaires. Don't you think there are enough millionaires in Congress right now? We need someone who's going to represent the people of Montana. Let's talk about education. You know, the, uh, my opponent does not have a very good record when it comes to public education. He is standing with groups that want to privatize and uh, you know, with the whole charter system where they, they basically the idea is that, that, uh, sc that maybe communities that have more money should, uh, should be able to have their, their, uh, their funnel public um, education money into these private schools. You know, to me, public education is a great equalizer here in, in not only Montana, but in the country as well. You know, this is something that, that, that I think is one of the greatest success stories about America, how we have public education. And so we, we just cannot allow this, uh, this, this to happen. And uh, let's talk about student debt as well. You know, uh, my own kids are, uh, both have co college students loans and I had to co-sign my son's loans and these are predatory loans. The average student leaves college right now with $37,000 in debt. You know, we have to cap these loans at 3%. You know, my own son's loan, I've, uh, I've been paying on this loan for, for years and it doesn't go down, it just keeps going up. These are predatory loans and so we have to change that. We cannot have the people sitting at the table who are making the decisions to, to have these, these high interest loans that, that college students have to, to deal under. But anyway, I'm here today to ask you to, to uh, really consider how important this is for the future of Montana. This is a fight for the soul of Montana. You have to really talk to all your fellow students and acquaint them of the importance of this election. I might add just as a, a side note that when I was at the University of Montana, this is when we were in the middle of the war in Vietnam and we had student strikes that filled the entire oval with people who were standing up against the war. And this happened all across the country and quite frankly I think it was the student riots that really brought the war in Vietnam to an end. Yeah. This is how you do this. You have to recognize the power that you have to make change here in America. So. Well, as we go forward, you know, uh, today is the first day that you can you can actually go down. Uh, Alyssa is also kind of writing in advance for those of you who want to go down and pick up your your uh, early ballots. You know, so I'm asking you all to uh, to really you know get involved in this because I really need your help to carry the day. I can't do this alone. We all have to do this together. So please, if I can ask you one thing, take the time to just do that one thing, just to vote and also to talk to your fellow students about voting. So let's just see if we can bring this home. You know, <clears throat> I know that each one of you, you know, we all have our concerns and our hopes and our dreams for the future of this land and this life. And I know if we stand together, we can do this. We can bring this home. And today, more than ever, we must stand and hold our leaders accountable. We cannot give up. You know, we have to stand up and unify and vote vote if not today on may 25th and when you cannot stand i will stand for you and when you feel like your voices are being drowned out by critics and bullies i will stand behind the microphone to make your voices heard so stand with me montana and i will stand up for you thank you so much everybody now let's go and win this thing